So yesterday, right? We just uh, we just about talked about. Uh, oh yeah, I just showed you that you can actually compute uh, right uh, a DCT through a DFT, and it also means that. Okay, what it also means is that uh, a DCT right introduces something like a kind of a uh, no. Uh, it you know, introduces an implicit sort of a periodicity, introduces implicitly rather, not explicit, but implicitly, introduces implicitly a 2n periodicity, 2n periodicity by symmetric extension, right, by symmetric extension of the sequence. Okay. And uh, we also saw that because of this, uh, you do not have false jumps and therefore right it has it has a dk dk rate that is actually higher than higher than uh, this one dft okay now one more thing like like i said uh, if you look at the look at the diagonalization property this doesn't have the first point right it doesn't have anything to do with diagonalization simply the fact that you know the when you take a when you take a dct type 2 this is what it does the other property is is one of one of the diagonalization and this and this uh, and this diagonalization is again right yet another sort of a sort of a property of, D, of DCT that actually propels it over DFT, okay. And this is a fairly important property because this applies this is uh, this is something like an uh, like an ensemble property, right? This applies for a whole class of signals. So uh, right when you talk about uh, when you talk when you talk about a, uh, about a you know, first order Markov process, right? It looks like this one row row square all the way and then uh, let's say row 1, row, row square and then row square, row 1, row and so on, okay. So, row power n minus 1 whatever, right, at this end and then goes all the way down to 1, okay. Now, this kind of a matrix, right, uh, we, we know and where this row, row now takes a value between 0 and 1, okay. Now, uh, now the interesting part is, right, now if you ask, I mean, what kind of a matrix does this guy diagonalize? Right, when you look at a you know, 1D, 1D, this one DCT, and suppose you ask, right, what kind of a matrix does it diagonalize? It turns out that it diagonalizes, okay, these are all works, you know, that others have done and they have shown that just as we did, right, uh, suppose you have some matrix, uh, let us say, whatever, right, you want to call it some A uh, and or let us say, okay, let us call it some B so that you do not confuse it with some. So, B, then what we did was for a, for a, for a Fourier, right, we did phi B phi star or typically it should be phi Hermitian. Now, in this case, we will have to do like C. B C transpose, right? Because C is real. Now, when you do this, right? This is supposed to diagonalize B, but then the point is, what kind of B, okay? Does uh, does this diagonalize? For a Fourier transform, we saw that if B was circulant, the Fourier will actually diagonalize it. Now, with respect to the with respect to so the with respect to a DCT, right? One would wonder as to what kind of a matrix it diagonalizes. So I'll just I'll just write down the structure of the matrix, okay? That it diagonalizes. It's a very kind of a curious structure, right? And at first sight. It's not even clear. I mean, why is that relevant? Okay, but uh, let me write it down. So this looks like suppose I write down for a four cross four, right? I mean, you can write it for a for a general case. So this so this matrix, right? This is this has a symmetric tridiagonal structure. Symmetric tridiagonal ah, tri. Diagonal structure, structure, and it looks like this: one minus alpha, minus alpha zero zero, minus alpha one, minus alpha zero, zero minus alpha one, minus alpha, and zero zero, minus alpha one minus alpha. Okay, so it looks like this. So, for example, um, if you take, uh, if you take, uh, you know, if you're going to construct a C which is four cross four, and suppose you multiply it in this manner, you know, you'll see that it'll actually diagonalize it, and then those will be the eigenvectors. Eigenvectors will be the columns of C transpose, and all you can see. Okay, and just as we did for Fourier. I don't want to do all that now. You know how to do. Okay. Now, what has this got to do, right? So, the fact that uh, that you know it can diagonalize a matrix like this, it is not immediately apparent as to why is this so why is this so important. Now, it turns out. That uh, that you know a covariance like this, right? When you write down, which is like which is like, which is like a first order Markov, and this is normally followed by you know most of your most of your natural signals, right? So it's like saying that uh, it's like saying that on your you know immediate neighbor, uh, you're going to see sort of a dependence, you know, is in terms of rho. Imagine that rho is let's say 0 0.8, 0 0.9 or something, and then as you go, go further off, it reduces. <coughs> 
for example, if you're sitting here with, with yourself, you're one and then with your neighbor on either side, it's like row. And then as you go farther off, right? So it's like row power. Huh? How do you? Huh? Uh, yeah, so on to the right, because it's a, it's a tri-diagonal matrix, so you'll get three zeros on, on to the right. So this diagonal will, and then you'll get one more one in the middle. You get like three ones in the middle, one minus alpha, one minus alpha, and then all minus alphas and minus alphas. So it will remain the tridiagonal, except that one more one will get introduced in the middle. So same way it goes to, to whatever side. So what has this got to do with, uh, right, what, what, why is this property important, right? Why is the fact that if it diagonalizes such a matrix, it, it's good. The point is when you look at R, okay, which is a covariance like this, right, it turns out that, uh, now, uh, now, this, uh, right, this, this we are not trying to, we are, we are not going to prove this, but then, one can show that beta square r inverse, okay, beta square r inverse, okay, has this form. Okay, this again, I'm going to write for a 4 cross 4, okay. If you have the same 4 cross 4, right, then the beta square r inverse takes up a form which looks like, well, you know, which will, which will be some, one, what looks like 1 minus rho alpha, minus alpha 0, 0, then minus alpha 1, minus alpha 0, and then, uh, 0, minus alpha, 1, minus alpha, <coughs> minus alpha, and then 0, uh, 0, minus alpha, 1, minus rho alpha. Okay, it turns out, and in fact, that you can show this, okay, if you, if you, if you still doubt uh, what is beta and alpha, where uh, beta is given by uh, 1 minus rho square, or okay, beta square, in fact, is given by 1 minus rho square by 1 plus rho square and uh, alpha is given as rho by 1 plus rho square, right. So what this actually means is that if you, if you try like for example, if you take R inverse to be 1 by this, uh, this, uh, this quantity, uh, beta square and suppose you do R inverse times R where your R is this R, okay, where your R is this. Then you can show that, right, uh, if you take R inverse to be 1 by, 1 by C beta square, this matrix on the right hand side, and if you do this, right, then you will get actually identity. This I leave it to you to show. Okay, now, what this kind of see throws up is this is interesting thing that, uh, that for example, as rho, rho comes closer and closer to 1, in the sense that if you have rho equal to 0 0.8, 0 0.85, 0 0.9, as rho, as rho kind of see tends to 1, okay, then what happens is, what happens is, right, this matrix, right, that you have here begins to look somewhat like this, though it is not exactly this, right, you have 1 minus alpha there, but then as rho tends to 1, okay, the, the I mean, structure of this matrix, right, that is sitting here looks, begins to look, uh, begins to look, you know, much, you know, very much like this, okay. Now, so, so, actually, so the idea is that when you, when you hit something like rho equal to 0.95 and so on, right, so what you will find is that, uh, is that uh, you know a DCT, right? Suppose suppose for 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 let's say rho equal to 0 0.95, if you take right this to be R, and we also know that you see, uh, right? It is like this, right? So if I if I know that if I know that you know that this C diagonalizes R inverse, okay? Because of the fact that uh, because of the fact that uh, you know, right? I mean when you, you know when this when this rho kind of right comes kind of close to one. Then we know that when we know that this R inverse is going to take the right, I can actually put, right, put it in here, and if I do C R inverse C transpose, it it will it'll kind of it will not exactly diagonalize because rho is tending to one, it is not equal to one because rho equal to one would be a degenerate case. So when rho tends to one, that's why the, the range of rho is between zero and one, not not rho equal to one or rho equal to zero, right? So when you are when you are kind of inching towards one, right? When you come closer and closer, that means when the correlation becomes higher and higher and higher. Then you can show that, you know, in place of B, if I kind of put in this R inverse, and R inverse has the structure of, structure of this, uh, okay, suppose we call this as, as B, right? I mean, that is a kind of matrix that, uh, that a DCT can diagonalize. So you see that, so you see that, right, what will happen is when you, when you multiply R inverse on the left by C and on the right by C transpose, you will get an almost diagonal matrix. It may not be exactly diagonal because of the fact that you still have, we do not have 1 minus alpha there, okay? But as rho comes closer and closer to 1, you will start to see that, right, this diagonalization capability begins to, begins to, right, begins to look, look really good. And we know that, you know, you know, something, uh, something is, uh, so which then means that the columns of C transpose then become the eigenvectors of R inverse, correct? 
kind of. I mean, they are not exact eigenvectors, but as I said, right, as rho tends to 1, these become more and more close to being the eigenvectors of, of, of R inverse. And you know that if something is an, let's say A has an eigenvector EI, right, when you know that AI, e, A EI is some, let's say, lambda EI, right. Now, if, I, if A is invertible and suppose I do A inverse A EI, then I have lambda, right, A inverse EI. Okay, which then means that uh, A inverse EI, it right, will be equal to 1 by lambda EI, right. So, it actually means that when I mean, something is an eigenvector for A inverse, it is also an eigenvector for, for A, correct. So, in this case, so what this means is that, so this, so this very same columns of C transpose will also, will also, you know, you can claim that they will also be eigenvectors for R, because our real interest is in R, right. We want to be able to, right, diagonalize R. So, it turns out that, you know, when you just look at R, right, it is not, it is not immediately apparent as to why these have to be eigenvectors for R. But then if you look at R inverse structure, right, R inverse structure looks very similar, very similar, that looks like a symmetric diagonal matrix for this R, okay, for this kind of R. And, uh, and then, and then the fact is when rho comes closer and closer to 1, okay, then it, uh, then it kind of, you know, begins to look like the symmetric diagonal, tri di tri diagonal matrix that, uh, that, uh, that uh, DCT can diagonalize. And therefore, right, that is why that is why we say that, right, it tends to uh, it tends to look like the KL transform. Though, though, see, in DC, the DFT case, when we had a circular matrix, we said it is equal to the KLT, right? Here, we will not make the statement that DCT is equal to the KLT for this for the first order Markov when rho rho kind of tends to one. But when rent or when rho tends to one, it'll it'll kind of come closer and closer to being the KLT. Okay, we won't say it is the KLT, but then it comes closer and closer. To, whereas a DFT cannot. I cannot do this. I mean, this, this is okay. So, suppose instead of C, right, suppose you put phi there and suppose I put R, phi R, phi transpose, right, this R, this kind of Markov thing and suppose I take R equal to R, you know, close to 1, let us say 0.95 or something and suppose or 0.9 even. If you put that and then if you try to see, right, then uh, then what you will find is that, uh, you know, uh, the diagonalization capability of DFT will not be as good as, as actually a DCT. Okay, but the but nice thing about this is, this is more a statistical property, right? So it means that all signals that that kind of satisfy that satisfy that kind of a Markovian law, right? They are all likely to be. I mean, so for for all of them, these eigenvectors are good. The eigenvectors coming out of a DCT, even though they are actually data independent, correct? I mean, right? DCT we didn't choose depending upon R, right? We just chose a DCT basis. Turns out that that basis, even though it is data independent, but then you know, it is actually close to being optimal for this kind of matrices, for this kind of covariance, right. Any, any, any doubts at this point? Anyway, right, I'm going to leave it to you to, to find out, I mean, what, I mean, right, suppose I ask you what might be then the, then the really true eigen sort of a basis for this R, right, I leave it to you to find out. I haven't, I haven't said that. It is said that this looks closer and closer. So, so, right, C has this. Right, we know that C has this alpha k, then a cos by pi 2n plus 1k by 2n, right. But if you really wonder what might be the, okay, now coming to, uh, so the extension, right, to a 2D sort of a, sort of a DCT, right, is, uh, is straightforward. Okay, 2D DCT, right, so, so it all extends the same way, okay, we will not spend uh, no too much time. So, you can think of a, think of a, think of an image that is given to you, which is you and then you want your V, so we can of course write this as A U A transpose we know and instead of A substitute C which is a DCT or in other words you can kind of you know, order it like we said the other day and then we can do something like a C script acting on U where what is uh, what is the C script now? C Kronecker C, right. Uh, and, and, and again, right, I leave it to you, you can easily show, right, that C inverse is C transpose, all that will follow, no, C inverse is C Kronecker C inverse, which is C inverse Kronecker C inverse, uh, which is C transpose Kronecker C transpose, which is C Kronecker C transpose, which is script C transpose, right. So, all this, all the, we will not repeat all this, okay, we have done uh, done this, now you are, uh, so I am just writing it some, some kind of a different C, so that you can actually differentiate it from the usual C that we write for a, for a, for a, for a, for a 1D DCT. And in terms of the computational complexity, because you can, because yesterday itself we showed that you can compute it using a fast Fourier transform and therefore the computational complexity for a 2D DCT is order n square log n to the base 2. The same as whatever you had for actually DF, DFT and then, and, and, you know, and this interpretation goes through for all transforms, right. Like I said the other day, so when you have A, U, A transpose, right, you can either, you can, you can either look upon this as A acting on the columns of U. 
say and, and, and always kind of say remember that you know v and u right we have a certain interpretation right when u is kept like that okay m whatever m n then we interpret k to be the k to capture the variation along m and n to uh, l to capture the variation along n right so so here you can think of a which is your whatever transform that you have acting on the columns of u to give you some this intermediate array ui okay a transpose and then if so if you have taken first column you should then then take the take the row right transform of the rows therefore this is the same as a ui transpose the whole transpose right so a ui transpose will take care of the fact that you will you will take the then the rows but then you should take again a transpose otherwise your v and u those dime, the k variations along m and then l capturing variations along n right for that to happen one more you should kind of see retranspose right or you think about it as a, a u a transpose you first do this guy right which means that this you will write as a and to what we will write it as uh, a u transpose transpose eh? correct a u transpose transpose hmm correct and then which then means that you are first taking the rows of u correct i mean you are taking the transform you are already transforming u so that means you are you are so your ui already taken the rows now you should take the columns so the transpose will take the column and the transpose will also make sure that your k variation will capture will k will capture variations along m n will capture variations along uh, l will capture variations along n so so that is why the, the next transpose will also get you to the rows uh, get you to the uh, to the columns you transpose means you're doing the rows first and then you're doing the columns and the, and this transpose will also take care of the fact that uh, right v and uh, v and u have the same sort of interpretation right the k comma l interpretation for m comma n right so so in general this is true so we don't want every time not keep writing summation and keep showing right you can directly infer that any orthogonal transform which is separable and can be written as au a transpose all that separability will help you row column column row whatever you want to do okay just that in each case you may want to specifically substitute the particular transform and i'm going to leave it to you as an exercise to show as to what kind of uh, matrix will a uh, 2d 2d dct dct diagonalize and all the other properties still hold even for images Okay, the fact that you know two n by two n by two n, all that the right cyclically repeating on the grid, all that will be still valid. Now let's let's move on to one more transform. Okay, so we have seen a trigonometric transform. There well, are two of them, in fact, right? One is uh, this DFT, and then another is you know DCT. So we'll go to something which is not actually trigonometric. So which is what is the Walsh-Hadamard transform? Okay, and the idea is not to do everything. Okay, in 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 fact, uh, right? If you read now any of these transforms, you will know. Okay, you will know how they how they determine I how they work and so on. So Walsh-Hadamard transform, right? So okay, this this actually the in the I mean, nice thing about it is the entries are kind of say plus minus one because there is a scale factor that sits outside, but otherwise all entries are like plus minus one. So so everything right that you can that you want to do, okay, you can just do in terms of you know in terms of additions and subtractions and so on. And uh, so the Walsh-Hadamard, right? The way you build it up is uh, to actually write it. Now, in the following form, so so you start with actually a core matrix. So the Hadamard matrices, right, as they are called, uh, the Hadamard matrices, Hadamard transform matrices, of course, transform matrices H n, as they are called. R n by n matrices, where n is n is a, n is a power of two, n equal to one, two, three, and so on. And uh, these are generated by from a core matrix. These can oh, these can be generated. From a core matrix H one, let's say, let's call this as H one, which is one by root two, one 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 minus one. So at a, at a two cross two, this looks like a DFT. This looks like a DCT, right? They are all identical. But as you go to higher dimension, I mean higher sizes, then they won't look. And any any H n that you want, okay, is simply H n minus one Kronecker H one. Which also in this case, right? You can even write it as H one Kronecker H n minus one, because because everything is coming as H one Kronecker with itself, 
right? For example, H2 is what? H1 Kronecker with H1, right? And therefore, right, this we can write. H1 Kronecker H1 will then become 1 by 2, right? Uh, 1, 1, 1 minus 1, 1, 1, 1 minus 1, 1, 1, 1 minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, 1. Correct? And uh, then if you want to go to, let's say, H3, right? Don't go beyond that. So, H3 is H2 Kronecker H1. So, which is nothing but 1 by 2 root 2 now because and then what is it? So, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 minus 1, 1 minus 1, 1, 1 minus 1 minus 1, 1 minus 1 minus 1 and H3 is H2 Kronecker H1 which is 1 by 2 root 2, 1, 1, 1, 1 minus 1, 1 minus 1, 1, 1 minus 1 minus 1, 1 minus 1 minus 1, 1, 1, 1 minus 1, 1 minus 1, 1, 1 minus 1 minus 1. Minus one, minus one, one, minus one, minus one, minus one, minus one, one, minus one, minus one, 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 minus one, 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 minus one. Okay, so how to look? So okay, so if you see here, you see an H3 and so on, right? So we can actually so we can go up. And uh, now incidentally, it turns out that if you try to do V is equal to H U, right? Suppose suppose somebody gives you a sequence U of whatever length, right? And uh, suppose you do H U. Okay, <coughs> then uh, then H inverse, right? Which uh, you would expect to be H Hermitian. Okay, because these are all orthogonal transforms. H H is H H Hermitian, and then in this case, you know, it's real. And then you can also you can also check that H transpose is equal to H. Okay, therefore, in fact, U is equal to some simply H times V. So H inverse is simply equal to H. Okay, so 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 in that sense, right? Uh, because because it's kind of binary valued except for that factor that is outside, right? So so it can be implemented fast. So there are fast versions again. Uh, but then thing is, right? It doesn't have the kind of uh, energy packing capability, or, you know, like that of a kind of a DCT. Therefore, it is not really you know a preferred kind of transform. But then for hardware implementation and all, right? It's good because you just you're just dealing with binary values, right? So that way, the hardware implementation part for this uh, for this and it's also called Walsh because if you look at the rows of this matrix, right? These are these are Walsh functions. <coughs> okay, so there are these Hadamard matrices, and then when you when you do a, do a Kronecker recursion, then you actually get you know get this uh, you know get these you know get these rows or columns. They're both the same, right? So. If you look at them, right, they are kind of Walsh functions, right? That's why it's called a Hadamard Walsh transform. And again, all the all the things are are still good, you know, in the sense that fast computation, all that is fine. Except that, right, there are no there are no great say, statistical properties and all for this. The implementation part is good, okay, to implement it in hardware. Okay, now with this, anyway, right, going to a two D is all very simple. Just do an H Kronecker H, right, whatever it is, you know, on the on this H, and then you it'll take you to two D. 